I find it a little bit funny that the first digital Olympus camera I use is a DSLR. Up until about 2010, Olympus made DSLRs. Not just any DSLRs, but DSLRs with a small 4 thirds sensor, similar to what you're used to hearing about nowadays. The philosophy then was the same the company has today. Compact, light camera setups with professional features. In many ways, they were ahead of the trend that exists today for small mirrorless cameras. Today, cameras like this Olympus E450 are relatively easy to find and affordable. Let me tell you about my experience using one for the last couple months and whether I think it's worth picking one up. First, let's talk the overall tech in the camera. It has a respectable 10 megapixel 4 thirds sensor, and I found it to be comparable to other sensors of the era. That is, pleasing colors and plenty of detail in well-lit situations. When the lights get dim, it's a bit more challenging. Like cameras of the era, it suffers from poor low light performance compared to modern cameras. Though, for most day-to-day -day photography, I did not find this to be a problem, and I rarely do. Arguably the most unique feature of these DSLRs was the two times crop factor allowed by that 4 3rd sensor, and it has its advantages for extra reach while maintaining the small size of the camera and lenses. While there weren't loads of lenses produced for this lineup before Olympus switched to the slightly adjusted Micro Four Thirds mount, there are a few basic and a few pro-level lenses available. Some of these can still fetch a high price, but we'll talk about cost advantages with this setup later on in the video. The Olympus E450 has live view with autofocus, a feature that virtually every camera has today, but, but that Olympus actually pioneered. By the time this model was released, other brands also started incorporating it, and you can see why. It's a handy feature to have for those times where you want to compose a shot without your face pressed against the viewfinder, or you need the extra illumination. If you are thinking about picking one of these cameras up today, it's worth mentioning the storage situation. The Olympus E450 can support CF cards and Olympus's own XD cards. Do you remember these guys? In order to use the camera with a more relevant SD card, you can use a CF to SD card adapter like I am here. If you like old digital cameras, it's worth having one of these around. Now let me tell you about my favorite feature of the camera. I've really enjoyed the ergonomics of the Olympus E450. The camera is small and light, thanks to that sensor size advantage. But light cameras aren't always comfortable. Thankfully, the designers at Olympus have molded the camera front and rear grip to your hand. I have medium-sized hands, and it's almost perfect. If you have large hands, I could see it feeling a little bit small. Still, I have to give them credit for putting ergonomics first. This is a good feeling camera. Nothing frustrates me more than a great camera that is uncomfortable to use. This should be one of your first considerations when purchasing a camera, not last. After all, I would hope your goal is to actually use the camera a lot and not just stare at it while it sits on a shelf. The buttons, dials, and menus are simple to use. The viewfinder is fairly large and bright considering the overall size. I had no issues with it, even if it was obviously smaller than what I'm used to. Let's move on to image quality. The 14 to 42 kit lens that came with mine does leave much to be desired, but it's not terrible either. When Olympus released this camera, they also released their 25 mm 2.8 pancake lens. I really hope I get to try that combo out one day. I think it would really help the sensor shine. They even had this nice leather case to go along for their special edition kit. I looked up to see if there's any of these still around and I only found one on the whole internet. It's sitting here at Parks Camera in the UK for only four pounds. They didn't offer US shipping. Trust me, I tried to get it. 
but if you're in the UK and own one of these cameras, you should pick it up right now. The Olympus E450 and other Olympus DSLRs of the time are an interesting option in the flood of digital cameras. On the one hand, they are fairly inexpensive. On the other hand, because they are less common than the big names, it often artificially drives up the price. Be patient and be prepared to offer the seller less. I'm sure they'll come around when they realize no one is buying their camera at a premium price. If you do find one for cheap, it's worth noting that the most common lenses for this camera include the kit 14 to 42, a 40 to 150, and a 70 to 300. While I haven't had the chance to try out those telephoto zooms, it certainly seems like an interesting budget wildlife option with that extra reach. If you need more pro lenses with large constant apertures and nice bright primes, then you need to be lucky. Those are rarer and often drive a still premium price to this day. So, is it worth picking one of these up nowadays? The Olympus E450 is clearly still a capable camera with lovely image quality and some nifty features. The lens options are somewhat limited and the mount is long discontinued, which makes an upgrade path difficult. However, if you can find an Olympus DSLR for a steal, especially if it includes some of its rare lenses, it could very well suit you as a unique old DSLR to take some beautiful images with. As always, thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video and want to see more about old, inexpensive cameras, then make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you're looking for a deal on an old, used camera, then check out the link in my description to my favorite used camera retailer. Now I want to know, do any of you still shoot with an Olympus DSLR? Maybe you shoot with their newer mirrorless systems? I admit I know very little about Olympus generally, so feel free to catch me up to speed. I just picked up this guy as well though, for very little, so I'm excited to try it out. Stop by my blog and forum to chat with me and others in the community, and follow me on Instagram if you want to know what I'm shooting with right now. Remember to shoot wherever you are with whatever you got, and until next time, happy snapping.